One thing I'm hearing really often lately here in 2023 because of high interest rates is that I'm just going to wait until later until rates come down to buy a home. So that's certainly a very common objection to buying a home right now. I wanted to break down some of the numbers uh, for you to, in case you're curious about that, uh, comparing buying right now compared to projections of interest rates in the future and also accounting for rising home values or if they're going to go up or down along with the interest rates, what are the different factors involved and what would it be like to buy now versus buying in a year or two years or three years? Make those comparisons, crunch the numbers and see really what makes the most sense if you are on the fence whether or not to buy right now. So we'll do a screen share here and we'll kind of dive into some of the numbers here at different price points to see how they shake out for you. So these numbers here are meant to give you a general idea of what it's like to buy right now as of August 22nd, 2023, compared to buying in a year, two years, or three years. The interest rate there at 7.62% is actually the national average. Um, certainly you could do better than that if you shop around a little bit or if you have uh, above average credit. But that gives us a general basis here. And then in one year, a lot of people are predicting that it's going to be around 6% and maybe after a, a couple of years and maybe going forward from there, we're going to be hovering around 5%. So obviously these numbers would change if those predictions are incorrect. Uh, but I just did a couple of different breakdowns here, one at 250, one at 500, one at 750, and one at a million uh, for different price points. Certainly 250 is pretty uh, kind of like the median or average home price here in Cincinnati. So we'll kind of focus on that one. <clears throat> but you can look at the numbers here. It's pretty um, straightforward. Um, the down payment's not really important because we're just doing 20% down here just to make it simple and not to have any PMI involved. But the monthly P and I principal and interest that does not include taxes and insurance. So don't look at this as an actual accurate reflection of your actual mortgage payment. But as a comparison, not worrying about taxes and insurance. What we're looking at is the price right now, the interest rate right now, and what would your payment be without taxes and insurance if you put 20% down? And then we're looking in one year, if the uh, value you can see here in this formula, it's um, 250 times 1.04, so up 4%. So that's what it's been um, year over year, 2023 compared to 2022, 4% home value growth, which you know, you could argue that it's actually going to be more than that in the future. We don't really know, but that's pretty conservative. There's no indication that home values are going to go down in Cincinnati or even flatline because we just have such limited inventory and we still have strong demand. So 4% <clears throat> home value increase going forward one year, you're going to be at 260. Your interest rate, if it's 6%, you can kind of see the breakdown here. You would save 167 some dollars a month, which would equate to $2,000 for an entire year. Um, so that seems like that might be a good idea because you would save $2,000. However, what we're not accounting for here, what you need to just kind of think about is the difference there is that you would actually be um, losing out on $10,000 worth of equity. Plus we're not factoring in the fact that once you make these payments every month, you're gonna be actually paying down that balance from 250, probably not a ton in a year, but you'll pay it down some. But just to be conservative, $10,000 worth of equity because the values have gone up that much and you're only saving $2,000 by doing that, by waiting a year. So it would take you about five years for that to make sense. Um, and then just going forward here, if we're down to 5%, again, we did every year, we did about a 4% uh, increase on home value. And then second year we go down to 5%. And most people think we're not going to get really below that for quite a while, if ever. Um, so again, we don't really know, but that's why on the third year, we just kept it at 5%. So you'll see the savings gets bigger um, up to 3000 if you wait a couple years, but then it goes back down because home values are continuing to increase, but the rate's staying the same. So however, you do have to account for the difference in purchase price with a 4% home value increase year over year, the longer you wait, the more it's gonna to cost to buy that house, the more cash you have to put down, et cetera. Your payment may be less if the interest rate's lower, even though the price is higher, because that's a pretty big difference in interest rate, 2.62%. But ultimately, if saving $3,000 per year, but you're having to make up $20,000 worth of difference in purchase price, plus you probably uh, paid down that balance as well. So you're probably looking around 
twenty to twenty five thousand, maybe even thirty thousand dollars worth of equity, it might take you several years to get that back. So uh, it doesn't look like here initially that that would make a ton of sense to do, just financially speaking. Uh, if you go over to these other examples, they're just going to basically be bigger numbers, but a similar comparison. You're going to see a savings in year one, a savings in year two, and then less of a savings in year three. Um, but again, in none of these examples do we see such a huge savings on an annual basis to overcome the difference in the purchase price, again, even if it's just a 4% home value increase. Now, what we saw in 2020 and 2021, 22 as well, um, actually from 2021 to 2022, um, and comparing it to 2020, we saw an 18 to 19% home value increase in both of those years. So from 20 to 21, we saw about 18 to 19%, and then again from 21 to 22. So if we were to type those numbers in, this would be drastically different. Um, it would actually probably not save anything at all, but um, this is just a 4% increase, which is not even really keeping pace with current inflation. So it's very modest, but you can see, um, and you can pause this video if you want to take a deeper dive here and look at a price point that's more relevant to you. But just to, based on the, on the surface level analysis here, um, it appears that yes, you could save money by waiting. But I think the bigger question is, what is going on in your life? What are your housing needs? How badly do you want to own a home versus do you not really mind renting? Uh, we haven't also figured in here the fact that while you're waiting a year, two, three years, you're paying uh, you're paying rent to you could have to obviously pay something to live somewhere unless you're able to live for free somewhere. So, but even as we scratch the surface here, it doesn't look that enticing financially speaking to wait one, two, three years to buy a home to try to save some money because of the rate. So the, the takeaway here for me is that a lot of people get focused on interest rate and they kind of feel like anything that starts with a seven is bad, which of course it's not as good as it was the last couple of years when it was threes and fours. However, when you crunch the numbers, even just again on the surface, it doesn't really excite me at least. So uh, maybe you feel differently about that and you can let us know in the comments there. But I think the big takeaway here is to not focus just on one of the variables, but look at your, the whole picture financially, but also maybe even take a step back and not make a decision whether or not to buy a home based on purely financial terms, but based on what are your housing needs? What are your interests? What is your lifestyle? Do you really want to own a home or do you not mind renting a home? Do you want to build equity and long-term wealth in a, in a home or do you not really believe in that because obviously there's home maintenance and repairs to be done too. So maybe in your experience, you haven't really been able to see that much of a gain by owning a home. But <clears throat> historically speaking, one of the best investments, according to a lot of people, is to buy a home and hold on to it long term. Sure, there are ups and downs in uh, if you have to sell it at a low point and you bought it at a high point, you're going to lose money. But generally speaking, if you're going to stay in one place for a while, uh, it does make sense to at least consider buying a home. And at least on the surface here, it doesn't seem like waiting is going to really save you any money at all. But if you've watched any of my other videos, I always try to advise people um, whether they want my advice or not. I always just say, you know, I don't think it's smart to try to time the market that not only applies to interest rates, but also purchase price home values, where they're going, also just the general conditions in the market, whether the buyers or the sellers have leverage, uh, where's inventory at. Um, I think it makes the most sense to assess your situation, what your needs are in terms of housing, and determine whether or not you can afford to and qualify to buy a house if you're borrowing uh, money to do that. But I think it makes the most sense to just make a lifestyle choice, um, whether you want to be a renter or a homeowner. Obviously, the pros and cons, you can do some research on that. But the basic idea is, as a homeowner, you can build equity long term, build wealth that way. Um, obviously, the disadvantage there is that you have to do all the repairs and maintenance on the home. And depending on when you buy and when you sell and how long you hold the property and how much your expenses are there, um, it, it may or may not work out in your favor. Um, just personally from my experience and with my clients and just conventional wisdom, any research you do online is if you hold long term, you hold real estate long term, you're going to be end up being in a good spot there. Just like if you did an index fund in the stock market, you're, if you hold long term, um, you're probably going to end up in a good spot financially. One more thing to consider. 
that's really important is that all the stuff we've talked about so far with the numbers assumes that you're going to hang on to this 7.62% interest rate for the life of the loan, which everybody knows that if rates do go down to 6% in a year, 5% from then on or lower, there's very small chance that you would hang on to 7.62% as your interest rate forever. Um, you might end up moving and selling the house, which would kill the loan, and you'd start a new one at a lower rate in that case. Or you might refinance even, even if you're staying in the home because you can get a better interest rate that way. Uh, obviously, there's an expense to that, so you'd want to crunch the numbers with your loan officer um, and make sure that makes sense. Um, but again, these savings, again, they assume that you're going to hang on to the 7.62% interest rate and you're comparing that to the new rate and you're not changing it, there's still not that much savings that way as we've illustrated here. Um, but the point of all of this is this is all based on interest rates that are fixed on a 30 year term, which is what most people do. Um, and you are able to lower your rate by refinancing, but you cannot have a rate go up if you're doing a fixed rate mortgage. So that's what this is all based on here, a fixed rate and assuming that you don't refinance. And even then it's not that good of a financial decision in my opinion to wait in order to buy. Um, and even more so not a good financial decision if you have the option to refinance when the rates go down, which you do, again, at some cost, but in most cases it's gonna make sense if you're holding on to that property long-term that you're gonna pay a little bit upfront to do the refinance, but once um, you're there for a few years or maybe even sooner than that, you're gonna recoup that cost and then some and have a return on that investment. So, so considering that you have the opportunity to sell the house and do a new loan on a new house at a lower rate or refinance your current rate, even if you're in the same home, furthermore illustrates that the financial incentive of waiting until there's lower interest rates in order to buy a home in my opinion, doesn't really make sense. So hopefully diving into those numbers was interesting for you. I'd like to hear some of your comments, what your two cents are, because I think, although I have certainly a strong opinion about how I feel about the numbers and what they illustrate, maybe you have a different take on that. Feel free to share that in the comments. Or if you have any questions about buying a home in the current market conditions versus doing that in the future, you want to kind of look at your current situation, buying versus renting, perhaps what would make the most sense. Go ahead and Visit our site at 513flatfee.com. Click the link to schedule a call, or you can always call or text 513-497-8803. I'm Patrick Grosser with the 513 Flat Fee Real Estate Group at Fathom Realty.